Hello everyone and welcome to our special summer conference edition of AWSP's News You Can Use. We hope you're enjoying the conference so far and, you, and that you get a chance to connect with colleagues from across the state. I'm Scott. And I'm Ron. And we are here to pump you, you up. up. For starters, we'd like a show of hands of how many people have watched AWSP News this year. Come on, raise your hands high. Look around the room and tell your colleagues, you really need to be watching AWSP News. Gee, Scott, did you see how many hands were raised in the back corner? I wonder how many of them actually implemented something they saw on the news this year. Well, Ron, that is a fantastic question. It's been great to see principals sharing their best practices with each other via AWSP News. We can't wait to see them share even more stories next year of the amazing things happening in schools across our state. I wonder who will share the most best practices and inspirational ideas, elementary, middle level or high schools. Stop being so modest. What's working for you and your kids should be shared across the state. Contact David at AWSP.org with pictures, short videos, or a story idea you'd like to share. Hey, speaking of news, we have some important announcements for you guys, starting with big changes with TPEP. Oh, I thought we agreed not to use the word TPEP anymore, Ron. Well, we did, but in this case, they need to know, and by the way, that's a dollar in the jar, Scott. Got you covered. The TPEP yeah. steering committee has worked hard this year to ensure that our new evaluation system becomes a truly growth-minded system. By the time we open school this fall, we will have a great change that will allow teachers and principals to really work on professional growth areas in their focus evaluation without the risk that can potentially come with a level one or two rating. This upcoming year, teachers and principals who were proficient and distinguished on their last comprehensive evaluation will have that comprehensive score be the one that's reported on their focus evaluation for the three years of focus. This will allow true reflection and work on areas of growth without risk of consequences. Stay tuned for more information out of OSPI this August. Well, as long as we're talking about growth versus evaluation, this is a great time to remind people about the powerful professional learning opportunities that AWSP is offering this summer. We've got amazing cohort workshops for principals and assistant principals at any points of their career. From launching principal leadership to mastering principal leadership to trauma-informed workshops, we've got it all. Check out our website for more information. And don't delay. Sessions are filling fast. Principals across the state have worked hard this year advocating for changes at the state and federal level that are better for kids, schools, and the demands on the principalship. Your voice is instrumental. We know surveys are a pain, but in this case, hearing from you is crucial. OSPI is seeking feedback via their Educator Working Conditions Survey. Wouldn't it be great if everyone in the room right now committed to completing this survey to inform Washington state policy decisions? Go to our website and share the principal's perspective on educator working conditions. Wow, that's great. Thanks, Ron. What a great example of principals influencing policy in our state. We also remind you about the power of your influence and impact back in your schools and community. We always hear people talking about their favorite teacher or coach, but one of my personal missions has been to always ask people about their favorite principal growing up. As you can imagine, this question stirs up all sorts of emotions depending on their K-12 experience. If you were here last year, you might remember one person's particular reaction. David, can we go back in time? Do we still have that footage? Who was my favorite principal and why? Um, I'd have to say Scott Seaman, former principal of Tumwater High School. Um, he's really nice. He's really good with the kids. It's pretty funny. He's not afraid to make a fool of himself um, in front of the school at assemblies. Overall, great principal. Can I get my $50 now, Dad? Well, to close out this edition of AWSP's Summer Conference News, Scott and David went to the streets here in Olympia to ask a few more people about their favorite principal. Uh, I, I can remember many teachers, but not particularly a principal or assistant principal. Um, none come to mind. Not everyone wanted to talk to us, but of those that did, a few people couldn't remember a principal who made an impact in their life. It's a good reminder to make sure you connect with each and every kid. Well, that's it from, here, here, from us here at AWSP. 
Whoa, wait, <laughs> gotcha. You didn't think we'd leave you hanging on such a sour note, did you? No bloopers? We've got you covered. People had great memories of their principals. Here you go. Uh, favorite principal, Mr. Wade, Milner Crest Elementary in Coos Bay, Oregon. And why? Uh, he was an imposing figure. He hit, he was about 6'4", a military, tight haircut, think of about a Marine, short sleeve shirts. He probably looked like I, he was six, seven feet tall when I was, when I was a short little lad, but uh, he always knew how to talk to kids. Even though he was a big imposing guy, he knew how to, you know, uh, bend down and, and, and get on a knee and talk to you face to face because uh, he was such a big guy. So kind of a, a soft to uh, carry the, what is it, soft, Stick. What's the analogy? Velvet gloves. Yeah, yeah. Speak softly, carry a big stick. I so you're not being recorded right now, yeah. but were you ever sent to the principal's office? Oh, probably a few times. I can't remember or what, but I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't I have been? Oh gosh, it would have to be Al Carroll. Yeah. Really, yeah. Mr. Carroll, and Father why? Carroll, Father. Yes, <laughs> Father Carroll. This is going to go somewhere. Uh, can you tell us why? Uh, he was a really good guy. He cared about all the students uh, in the school. Um, always asked about our families, so we knew he knew something about us and cared about us. And we knew we couldn't get away with much with him, but he was pretty flexible and always focused on our academics. And I asked us, how are we doing in school? And if we lied to him, he knew we were lying because he knew what we were doing. So, but he was a good guy. And Gil, were you ever, this is kind of confessional since we're talking about Father Carroll, were you ever sent to his office? Can I plead the fifth? <laughs> no, uh, not to his office. Uh, that would have been to the vice principal's office, not the principal's. Um, Brian Vance of Roosevelt High School. And uh, I loved him because he was like a peer to the students. He would wander around the halls, give high fives, fist pumps to everyone. Just a really cool guy. Um, he was also really into sports, so he went and was a onlooker at a bunch of games. Also a really cool thing about him was that for every single person's birthday, he hand delivered to their classroom a little note that said happy birthday with a little, little prize. So yeah. Oh my gosh, did you get that David? That's incredible. Way to go Mr. Vance. And uh, final question for you, mm -hmm. just a confessional. Were you ever sent to the office for being naughty? I was not. I was, I was good. Well, my favorite principal was Marcia Sinatar, who was at Riviera Elementary School in Torrance, California. And she was the kind of person that got down on your level as a kid, because I was there between kindergarten and fifth grade. And she wanted to know how you were doing. In fact, she wanted to motivate you to, to go take on the world. She ended up writing a book called Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. Good night. Is there a principal that uh, you think of right now that's one of your favorites? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Julie Cox. She's the principal at North Beach Elementary in Seattle. And she's the kind of person that when she first came on, she made house calls to all of the kindergarten families. She came to my house, hung out for an hour in my backyard getting to know me and my son and my, and my wife. Wow, that's powerful. Any confessionals from you? Were you ever sent to the principal's office for being naughty? I was the model kid. I never went, did anything that I wasn't supposed to do. Although, now that my son is coming up to the ranks, when he gets sent to the principal's office, I am mortified. And thank goodness for Julie Cox. She knows exactly how to handle it. So, Ms. Cox, thank you. We are live here at uh, OSPI with Tim Stensauger, and we have a couple questions for him. The first question is, yes, he's a lot taller than I am. Uh, the first question is, Tim, who was one of your favorite administrators for you growing up? It was Leif Tangbold. He was an assistant principal at Hopkins Junior High in the probably early 70s. And, and what about him made him your favorite or the most memorable? He protected me from the, uh, the older kids. And he was consistent and fair and um, he was just a good man. You could go to him at any time. And so he was available. Right on. And the last question we've been throwing at people, any confessionals? Did you ever get sent to the principal's office for anything? Uh, yes. I'm Jeff Parks. He is a principal at Rees Middle School and um, has shepherded two of my sons through the Rees experience in middle school. Um, he, they have an environment at the school that is incredibly supportive and inclusive of all students. Um, really has a great program and wonderful teachers there and supporting teachers around um, great education for my, my two, two boys. Awesome, and as long as we have you, can we ask the question of, were you ever sent to the principal when you were a kid? Uh, yes, I was.
Would you like to uh, disclose on camera what for? Um, no, but uh, <laughs> I did get a SWAT for whatever it was. <laughs> Back when Back swatting was day. legal. <laughs> <laughs> were you ever sent to the principal's office when you were a kid? Uh, I never was sent to the principal's office, but I did go to the principal's office because I wanted one of my teachers fired in the fifth grade. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, I was always a salesperson, and so I would take, um, I would go and buy candy, and then I would sell it at the school, and the uh, principal came into my, my class, it was a science class, I was sitting on the table, and um, I was standing there with a very good friend of mine, and he comes up to me, he's like, Klecka, come over here. And I'm like, yeah. And he says, so I hear about your entrepreneurial spirit. And I was like, I don't know what that means. He's like, okay, well, whatever you do or don't know what it means, just make sure you stop doing it on the school grounds. And I said, all right, fine. So that was the end of my sales career of candy at the school. It was a very lucrative business I had going to. I was not very happy about it. Can you remember off the top of your head any times you were uh, sent to the principal's office for anything? Um, hard to believe, but I was actually never sent to the principal's office for anything. The principals came to me. That's the kind of power I had. They came to me. I didn't go to them. <laughs> so I just had them come to me if I ever had a problem. I'd have to say John Decker from Rainier High School because that was the longest I ever went to school anywhere, four years. And um, I thought... I. I believe it's because he was pretty fair. He was a fair principal. Um, I got into my fair share of um, meetings in his office, and I always appreciated the outcomes. Excellent. Now, would you care to elaborate at all no. on uh, <laughs> why you maybe ended up in his office? No, I don't. No comment. No comment. Maureen Harlan, who was a middle school teacher when I had her, and she was my favorite because she was excellent at linking to kids and their experiences. So figuring out what was that thing that motivated them, that hooked them, and then connecting to that. So she found what you were interested in and used that to build a relationship. Awesome. Now, did I hear that right though that you said that was your favorite teacher? She was a teacher and counselor and principal. So I had her as a teacher and as a principal. Awesome. Now, we're going to switch to confessionals. Amber, is there a time during your career in school where you might have gotten sent to the principal's office for anything? There is a time. I'm not going to admit it, <laughs> but yes, there was. Have I ever gotten called to the principal's office? Yes, I have. In the fifth grade, called my best friend a She stole my boyfriend. So I was sent to the principal's office, and he determined my fate by the magic eight ball. Whatever it said on the bottom was my punishment. Was he going to call my parents or not? Ask again later. That's it from us here at AWSP. Thanks for a great year of impacting the students in our state. Enjoy the conference. Wow, you said that better than I did. <laughs> Do we need to redo that chunk? No, I think that'll be good. That's fine. Uh, uh, I think we nailed it. That's what you say. I love bloopers. They're my favorite. Awesome. Well, you just, you just made them. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Hey, Barbara, can I call you right back? There's... People yeah, bothering me. Have a fake mic, by the way. <laughs> I mean, it's a real mic. It's just not hooked to anything. You look <laughs> you have just a like side? Hank Azaria. Who's that? See, oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> is he a WWE wrestler? Uh, no. No, no, he's, no an he's an actor. He's an actor. Oh, my gosh. I can never unsee that now. <laughs> Dang you. You told uh, me that you're incredibly inappropriate, though. So I'm intrigued. <laughs> Why did you say I would be your favorite I was, if I was one? Because that's how I kiss That's what I did to my principal, too. We're recording. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say Jerry Bender. Really? You wanted to, or you, he was? Well, no, because he's a principal, and he's my favorite. But he wasn't mine. No. What do you think about David? Do you have any stories about David? I have lots of stories about David, but I don't think I'm allowed to share them on TV. Again, no comment. Um, but he's a we are here live with the great Amber. She never <laughs> tempted me with that one, but here we are. Beautiful <laughs> breeze. Beautiful breeze, breeze our guest. <laughs> yeah, I glated his red onion. <laughs>
<laughs> Breathe deeply, Scott. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Chris Walsh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Yeah. Okay. I have to find my calm spot. I don't know where it's at. <laughs>